All this time, Vanathi remained in Sivagai. Sivagai was now taken down and placed on earth. Vanatha came out of the palanquin and stood. She stood watching the approaching procession. The Kalamuks were also looking in the same direction and remained silent. All that was heard was the sound of frogs crouching in the waterlogged canals and the sound of tree branches swaying in the wind. Vanati had no idea of running away. She knew it was impossible. You can escape from these Kalamugars by any strategy, but escaping from Anuradha in love is unthinkable. His intelligence, tact, and manipulative skills are world famous. And the world knew that he was very influential with the emperor. From olden times the palace penders would rave about the other officers and princes of the Chola Empire, but never talk about Anuradha. They are afraid that even if they talk very privately in the inner rooms of that temple, they will reach his ear. All this was known to the heavens. She knew that Princess Kunthi also held him in high esteem. So she expected help and protection from him. When these Kalamugars told her otherwise, her heart sank. Why should he have asked to capture this orphan girl? Maybe they are lying. Coming might be spoilers. Or maybe Madhurand Hagar and his entourage. Whoever it is, one thing is for sure, he must not tell anyone the news he knows about the prince. So whatever happens to him is okay even if it meant losing her own life. Thinking about this, Vanathi regained her depressed state of mind. Let anyone come. I assert that I come from the heroic lineage of Kajumbalar Velir. Only one palanquin separated and came forward in the procession. All the other elephant and horse entourages stood a little behind. The preceding palanquin was brought down to earth when it came close to Vanathi. Anuradha, the Prime Minister, came out of it. As soon as he gave a signal, the Sivakas and the Kalamuks moved away. Anuradha looked Vanati up and down and said, What a strange thing! What I am seeing is not a dream. Standing before me is the princess of Kajumbalar. Is it Vanati, the wealthy daughter of Paranthakan, the little Velar, who fought heroically in the Battle of Elam? He asked. Yes, sir. Is it not a dream that I am seeing? Is it Aniratha Brahmaraya, the revered love of the people of the Chola Empire standing before me? Is it the first minister who has won the emperor's intimate admiration? Vanatha said. Mother. I am glad that you know who I am. This will make my work easier and you will not have to give too much trouble. Aha. Don't worry about it. I don't care if I suffer because of a minister like you. I don't think it's a hardship at all. Your words also satisfy me. I have no intention of troubling you too much. I am going to ask you a couple of questions. If you answer them then. Sir. Before you question me I have a few questions to ask. Listen, mother. Listen without hesitation. I am your father. I consider you as my daughter. A few days ago I met your great father Senathapati Buthivikrama Kesari in Matadam. He told me to take care of you like my daughter. I promised. Vandanam my father. The emperor once promised to be a father to me who lost my father in childhood, now you have appeared as a father. What do I lack now? Hurry up and ask me what you want to ask, mother. The sky is getting dark. It looks like it's going to rain. Father. Are you the ones who made your beautiful daughter, who was traveling in a palanquin along the road, be led away from these Kalamugars and brought here by force? Are you the ones who told them to burn this poor woman's hand with a torch? These horrible people accused themselves of that. I do not believe it. Child. What they say is true, I ordered them to do so. If it is a crime, I am responsible for it. Isn't it? If you don't know that, who else will you ask? I had heard that there was no fear in travelling through the kingdom of Emperor Sundarashola. I had also heard that miscreants who harass women are severely punished. Is it not a very strange thing that they should doubt whether it is a crime or not? Prime Minister Anuradha was stunned. He tried twice to interrupt to no avail. Now he strained his voice and said, Woman! Wait a minute! 
don't show all your eloquence. Criminal, or not. I am not without reason to suspect that. It depends on your answer to my question. I heard that a woman who knew an important royal secret was going on the road to Nagaipatnam. I ordered my men to stop her. They thought they were carrying out my orders. Perhaps they were mistaken. Instead of the woman involved in the royal conspiracy, the child might have captured you, returning after asking the astrologer for astrology. Daughter. You say, is it your intention to return from infancy to the past? Did the Savakai thongs take you to Nagapatnam Road by mistake? You did not go to Nagaipadinam with the intention of secretly seeing someone who had conspired against the state. If you prove that they did not, then what they have done is a crime, I have a part in it too. What do you say, girl? Let me ask more clearly. Didn't you set out for Nagaipatanam to secretly meet Prince Aromas Hivarman? What do you say, girl? Let me ask more clearly. Didn't you set out for Nagaipatanam to secretly meet Prince Aromas Hivarman? What do you say, girl? Let me ask more clearly. Didn't you set out for Nagaipatanam to secretly meet Prince Aromas Hivarman? The princess was now distraught. She was so furious that she would burn the first minister, Anuradhar. But she felt there was no use in venting her anger. That innocent girl who did not know the art of blackmail had the power of deep thinking and the ability to maneuver from somewhere. Therefore, without answering the first minister's question directly, he said, Sir. What is this word? You say that Prince Aromas Hivarmarya plotted against the kingdom? Is it not a crime to talk about the emperor's noble sons like this? Is it not a conspiracy against the Chola clan? Aha! I must immediately tell Kundave Prati about this. She said. Speak, mother. If you answer my question, then there will be no need to delay here a moment. I will conduct you safely to the younger brat. If you don't answer their questions. If you don't say anything, mother. You can't escape from this old man so easily, you have to answer my question, said the minister. Sir. All-powerful Prime Minister Aniratha Brahmaraya. You can learn nothing about your prince from this poor powerless girl. Even if these Yamakangaras set fire to my hand as they threatened me earlier, I will say nothing. Kajumbalar Vira Vilir Kule Gomes. I admire your determination. But if you say that you will not tell any details about the prince, it is not so right. You have already told some details. If you tell me one more detail, nothing much will be lost. My job will also be easy. It will go away. Vanatha was startled again and thought, I have said something wrong, and her whole body trembled as if someone was squeezing her chest. No, I didn't say anything, this old man is trying to deceive me. She got some courage. Sir. Can a lie come from your mouth that speaks the Vedas? Can you teach about the absence of Sundarakula's first minister? I did not say anything about the prince. You say I said something. She said. Think, mother. He will think well. If you think that you cannot tell the details of a matter without talking about it, it is a big mistake. I refer to the details you did not say. Listen. The whole world is talking that Prince Aromas Hivarmar has drowned in the sea. Citizens and officials are all in a sea of sorrow. They are deep. You also know the news. And so, you said that you would not tell a single detail about the prince. What is there to come out of that? It turns out that you know that the prince is not dead. You did not deny that I told you that you were going to Nagapatanam to see him. How can I see a dead prince? You didn't ask back. You didn't say I'm not going to Nagapatanam, I'm going to another place. So you have admitted that the prince is alive in Nagapatanam and that you are going to see him. The rest of the details you need to tell are too. To tell where the prince is in Nagapatnam, you should also tell how you came to know about the news. If you have told these two details, then there is no need to linger here even for a moment and talk to this old man. You can go wherever you want to go. 
then there is no need to linger here even for a moment and talk to this old man. You can go wherever you want to go. Then there is no need to linger here even for a moment and talk to this old man. You can go wherever you want to go. Vanati's heart is now completely disturbed. She felt that what the First Minister had said was true and that she had betrayed the Prince in her ignorance. Is there any atonement for the crime he has committed? Not available at all. Nothing but letting go of life. Sir. You said that you were my great father's close friend. You claimed me as your daughter. I ask you one thing. I don't want to go to Nagaipatnam, I don't want to go to Palayare. It makes you want to go to Kajumbalur, that's right. I'll take you there. No, sir. I don't want to go to Kotumpalar either. I want to leave this world and go to the next. Tell your men to sacrifice me on the altar of the known sacrifice. I am ready. She said that. Mother. I told you that whatever you wish will be fulfilled. So if you want to go to the other world, I will send you there. But before that, you must answer my questions. Sir. Don't torment me in vain. I'm not going to answer any questions. If it's true what you said just now that you consider me your daughter. Daughter. There is no doubt about it. I regard you as my own daughter. Perhaps you do not know how much your family owes me. Your great father and I have been companions for forty years. But in royal affairs there is no such thing as friendship or relationship. Neither can a father. Can't see. Why? Look at the emperor's case. Did he not order his own son to be brought as a prisoner because he had conspired against the kingdom? Sir. Are you talking like this about Pani's Selvara? What plot has he plotted against the kingdom? Oko. You don't seem to know that. Pani Selvar left saying that he was going to fight in Sri Lanka. Our brave forces defeated the Sri Lankan forces there. Prince Aromas Hivarma tried to seize the Sri Lankan throne by using that opportunity. Isn't this a conspiracy against the kingdom? When he came to know this, the emperor ordered his Thirukumars to be taken prisoner. He sent. He spread the false news that the prince had deliberately jumped into the sea and died. Then he went ashore and hid somewhere. It seems that you refused to tell him his whereabouts because you did not know these details. If you tried to hide such an enemy of the kingdom, it would be a great crime, so tell me, mother. Said the Prime Minister. All the rage that Vanati had been holding in until now came out in a rage. She couldn't bear all the insults that the First Minister gave about Pani Selvara. The Sadhu woman pretended to be a warrior and said. He jumped to save his dear friend's life. He did not conspire against the Emperor. I don't know what evil my ears have done to listen to all this nonsense. Anuradha smiled lightly and said, Girl. Do you know what those who hear you intercede so furiously for Aromas Hivarma will think? They will think you two are lovers. Said. Sir. What you have just said is only half true. It is true that I have given him my heart. I do not want to hide this from you. But it is not fair for him to have this orphan girl in his heart. A bird may fall in love with the moon that shines in the sky. But the moon does not know that there is a bird. Ah! I never knew that my dear friend's daughter was such a great poetess. Aren't you a close friend of the youngest Prati Kundave, said the First Minister. Enough! I don't want to hear their praises. Either let me go my way. Or call your men and command them. Girl. Wait a minute. You know so many details about Pani's husband. So you must know where he is now. Just tell me that. I will send you to your great father immediately. He is coming back from Sri Lanka. He must have been in Madurai all this time. Sir. He who befriends such a treacherous man is not my great father. I have no near relation. I have told you what everyone knows about the prince. Nothing else you can learn from me. Do not delay. We mustn't be late. It looks like it's going to rain heavily. Does it only rain? Where there are people like themselves, thunder, 
lightning, and floods all come. As if confirming Vanati's statement, then a long flash of lightning flashed from one end of the sky to the other and disappeared. As the lightning disappeared and darkness fell, a thunderclap struck the heavens. Woman! Won't you tell me where Prince Aroma's Hivarman is? I will not tell. My guess is correct. You set out to carry some secret message to the prince's hideout, is this true or not? Sir! Vain work, I can no longer answer any of their questions. There is no other way, then, than to give you the same severe punishment as those who conspire against the kingdom. Waiting to be punished, sir. If I have to lay my head on the altar, I will. Sichet. You are a coward. Shall I give you such a trifling punishment? Look at that elephant. Venati looked in the direction he was pointing and there was an elephant standing like Conangria Hill. It looked like a black inked figure made of black stone. Two white tusks protruded and curved, showing off its blackness well. Girl! Have you heard of Gayendra Moksha? Tyrimal came running after hearing the alarming cry of the elephant, killed the crocodile and sent Gayendra to Moksha. Instead, this Gayendra sent so many people to the Moksha world where that Thyrimal lives. You said that you want to leave this world and go to the next world, didn't you? This is your wish. The elephant will do it in the blink of an eye. If it wraps around you with its praise and throws you away, you will fall straight into the world of Moksha. After saying this, Prime Minister Anuradhar laughed. That smile made Vanati blush. She thought that this minister was not human but a demon in human form. Gomez. Let me ask you in conclusion, are you telling me where Pani's wealth is? Or are you going to Moksha through this hymn of Gayendra? On hearing the words, Vanathi regained her senses. Sir. Are you asking Gayendra to come to me? Or shall I go to Gayendra myself? She asked majestically. Anuradha signaled with his hand and he said something in a language Vanati did not understand. The elephant was walking as if the earth was shaking. Came near Vanati. With its long hymn the flower of the sky encircled the smooth tika. Lifted her from the earth. In those few moments, many thoughts flowed in waves in Vanati's heart and disappeared. She was surprised to think that she was so brave at that moment. Ilya Pradai Kundave Devi often calls me a coward and a coward. How surprised he would be if he saw my courage from here right now. He will never know about this event, he will learn about the fact that I gave my life for Pawnee's sake. He will tell the prince that too. What will the prince think of me then? Won't he learn that Kajumbalar Velar's daughter is braver than that runaway girl? The elephant's chant rose softly above. Vanati also climbed up. Yes, yes. What Brahmarakshatra said was true. This Gayendra is going to send me straight to Moksha. The next moment was going to throw me off. I don't know how far I will fall, but when I fall, I will have no sense. Life will be gone by then. Vanati has now gone above the elephant's trunk. She closed her eyes. The elephant spun its praises. Vanati was ready to throw a fan. At that time, by the grace of God, Vanatha lost her self-consciousness.